Hello, my little monsters. I'm Heather and I'm here at Goldstone Books in Carmarthen. Today I'm going to tell you a traditional Russian folk tale called Vasilisa and Baba Yaga, and it's based on a story by James Mayhew. Now, there are some magic words that I would love for you to say with me. So I'm going to teach them to you now. So repeat after me. Eat up quickly, little one. And tell me, please, what should be done. Okay, let's say them all together now. On the count of three. One, two, three. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. Perfect. Are you ready, my little monsters? Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then I'll begin. Long ago and far away in the country of Russia, there lived a blacksmith and his wife. They had one daughter who was as kind-hearted as she was beautiful. Her name was Vasilisa, and they loved her very much. But sad things happen, even to good people. And one day Vasilisa's mother became very ill. She called the girl to her bedside and gave her the gift of a wooden Matroshka doll. Inside that doll was an even smaller doll. And inside that doll was an even smaller doll. And inside that doll was an even smaller doll. And inside that doll was a tiny little doll whose name was Kukulka. Her mother said to her, I am not long for this world, but I can give you two things, my blessing and this magic doll. If you are ever in trouble, if you ever need help, feed the doll and say these magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. And with those words, Vasilisa's mother closed her eyes and died. And oh, did Vasilisa weep, and oh, did her father cry. And he was so worried about his young daughter. He worked long hours far away from home. Who would look after her? And a young girl needs a mother. So the following year he married again to a widow with daughters of her own. He hoped she would have enough love in her heart for Vasilisa. But alas, this was not so. She dressed Vasilisa in rags while her own daughters wore nothing but silk. They feasted like royalty, where poor Vasilisa had to eat scraps and crumbs. They made her do all the works in all the weathers, in the snow, in the rain, and no matter how hungry she was, Vasilisa always carried a few crumbs in her pocket for Kukulka. Whenever she needed help, she pulled out the little doll and fed it and said these magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. And Kukulka would whisper in her ear and tell her what to do. When Vasilisa was to make the soup, Kukulka told her to polish the pot until it shone like a mirror, and then the soup would cook itself. When Vasilisa was to chop the wood, Kukulka told her to paint the handle of the axe and tie ribbons round it, and the wood would chop itself. Every day Vasilisa grew more and more beautiful, and every day the stepsisters hated her more and more, which only made them more ugly. But what can you do with such people? One day the father came home and announced that there was no money left at all. It had all been spent by the new wife and the new daughters. He had heard tell of a Tsarevich prince who lived far, far away across the thrice nine realms who was looking for a blacksmith. He would go in search of work. Before he left, they would have to move from their beautiful house to a small cottage far, far away from the village. Oh, what will become of me? said the stepmother as she thought of all the fine foods and fancy clothes she would miss. What will become of me, thought Vasilisa, as she thought about her stepmother and her stepsisters. As her father left, he told his new wife to never let the children go into the forest. Because deep in the deep dark forest lived Baba Yaga Bony Legs, the witch who ate children up in the blink of an eye. No sooner had he left then the stepmother and the stepsisters devised a plan to get rid of Vasilisa for good. That night, the stepmother lit three candles and set the girls to work. Her daughters were to sew and knit, 
and Vasilisa was to weave on a small wooden loom. After an hour, she opened the window and the winter winds came in and blew the candles out. My, how dark it is, said the stepmother. I cannot see. One of you girls will have to go and ask a neighbor for a light. Well, it shan't be me, said the sister who sewed. I can see perfectly well by the light of my needle, for it shines in the darkness. Well, don't think it will be me, said the sister who knitted. I can see perfectly well by my knitting needles, because they're bright and gleaming. But poor Vasilisa's wooden loom gave off no light, and so she was forced to go out into the darkness. There was frost on the ground, and she had no shoes. So she wrapped a shawl around herself and stepped out into the darkness. She walked and she walked for hours across flat fields and plains. She walked and she walked for hours until she was sure she was lost. She walked and she walked, but no kindly neighbor to ask for a light. She walked and she walked until she came to the deep, dark forest. She didn't want to go in, but what else could she do? She walked and she walked through the deep, dark forest. She walked and she walked for hours until she was sure she was lost. She walked and she walked until she heard... She turned to see a horseman riding towards her. He was all dressed in silver, and as he galloped past, the silver rays of dawn rose in the sky. As soon as he had passed by, she pulled out little Kukulka, fed her, and said the magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. Who was that silver horseman? And Kukulka whispered in her ear that that horseman, that silver horseman, was bright morning, the bringer of day. So now it was daytime. She walked and she walked through the deep, dark forest. She walked and she walked for hours until she was sure she was lost. She walked and she walked until she heard... She turned to see a second horseman riding towards her. He was all dressed in gold, and as he galloped past, the golden sun rose to the top of the sky. As soon as he had passed by, she pulled out little Kukulka, fed her, and said the magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. Who was that golden horseman? And Kukulka whispered in her ear that that horseman that golden horseman was glowing daytime, the bringer of the noonday sun. So now it was noon. She walked and she walked through the deep dark forest. She walked and she walked for hours until she was sure she was lost. She walked and she walked until she heard. She turned to see a third horseman riding towards her. He was all dressed in black and his clothes were studded with diamonds. He rode straight towards her and leapt over her head. And as he did, it was as if someone had thrown a blanket on top of the forest because everything became as black as coal. Quickly, she pulled out little Kukulka, fed her and said the magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me please what should be done. Who was that black horseman? And Kukulka whispered in her ear that that horseman, that black horseman, was dark nighttime, the bringer of night, the bringer of midnight. And so now it was midnight. She walked and she walked through the deep dark forest. She walked and she walked for hours until she felt she could go no further. But then suddenly she came to a clearing and she saw a little hut. But the hut looked like it was moving. As she looked closer, she saw the hut was standing on chicken's feet and was slowly walking around in a circle. Around the hut was a white wooden fence that looked exactly like the little fence around her own cottage. But when she looked closer, she saw that the fence was made of bones, children's bones. And atop every bone was a skull that glowed with an unearthly light. There was a gate in the fence, and the hinges of the gate were made with the bones of a human hand. And there was a lock on the gate made from a jawbone set with iron teeth, which snapped at Vasilisa and tried to bite her. Suddenly, there was a terrible sound in the air, a screeching and a screaming, as if a terrible storm were coming. The wind began to glow, 
The wind began to blow and the trees began to creak and moan. Suddenly, she saw Baba Yaga, the old witch, flying down in her iron pot, using her broomstick as a paddle. The old witch flew down and landed in front of the gate and said, Little house, little house, turn your back to the forest and your front to me. And the little house turned itself around and sat down. Then the old witch raised her nose and sniffed the air. Mmm, no more water, no more mud. Tonight I'll drink some human blood. Come out and tell me who you are. And Vasilisa stepped out from behind a tree where she had been hiding. Babushka, grandmother, my name is Vasilisa. And why have you come so deep into my forest? My stepmother sent me to ask for a light. Did she now? Well, if you want a light, you'll have to earn it. So you best follow me. And so she followed the old witch to the gate. And the old witch said, Bony gate, gate of bone, open up for only me. And creak. The gate opened. And Vasilisa followed her. What else could she do? When they got to the porch, a huge black crow swooped down and tried to peck out her eyes. Leave her, Voronushka. She enters with me. Inside the house was a great brown bear with sharp claws who tried to tear Vasilisa apart. Leave her, Misha Masha. She enters with me. In the corner was a black cat who hissed and spat at the girl. Leave her, Koshka. She enters with me. Now, if you want a light, go and fetch my supper. Vasilisa quickly looked around to try to find the kitchen. Hurry up, child. I'm ravenous. Quickly, she found the oven, and inside was enough meat for a dozen men. <sighs> she lifted it onto the table in front of the witch and then dragged a barrel of heavy wine over to the witch, who lifted up the barrel with one hand and drank it with one gulp, the blood-red liquid trickling down her hairy chin. Then she used her claws to tear at the meat and splintered the bones with her iron teeth. When she was finished, she wiped her mouth and said, Right, if you want a light, then you will need to weave a hundred yards of silver cloth before I return. And if you fail, then I will eat you. And do not think that you can escape, for Koshka will scratch you, Misha Masha will tear you apart, Varanushka will peck out your eyes, and the gates will bite you. And with that, the old witch got into her pot and flew away. How was Vasilisa going to weave a hundred yards of silver cloth? But she knew who to ask. She pulled out little Kukulka, fed her, and said the magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. And Kukulka whispered in her ear and told her to leave a plate of food on the window, go to sleep, and all would be well. Well, this Vasilisa did. And as she slept, bright morning came by, saw the food, and ate it. And as a thank you, left her a gift of a hundred yards of silver cloth. Well, you can imagine how furious the old witch was when she came home and saw that the girl had completed the task. How did you do it? I wish I knew. Right. Now, you must weave a hundred yards of golden cloth before I return. And if you fail, then I will eat you. And do not think that you can escape, for Koshka will scratch you, Misha Masha will tear you apart, Veronushka will peck out your eyes, and the gates will bite you. And with that, the old witch got into her pot and flew away. How was Vasilisa going to weave a hundred yards of golden cloth? But she knew who to ask. She pulled out little Kukulka, fed her, and said the magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. And Kukulka whispered in her ear to leave a second plate of food on the window and go to sleep, and all would be well. Well, this Vasilisa did. And as she did, glowing daytime came by and saw the food and ate it. And as a thank you, left her a gift of a hundred yards of golden cloth. Well, you can imagine how furious the old witch was when she came home and saw the girl had completed the second task. How did you do it? I wish I knew. Right. 
I shall set you a task and you will definitely fail and then I will be able to eat you. You must weave a hundred yards of black cloth studded with diamonds, yes, diamonds. And when you fail, I will eat you. And do not think that you can escape, for Koshka will scratch you, Misha Masha will tear you apart, that Anushka will peck out your eyes and the gates will bite you. And with that, the old witch got into her pot and flew away. How was Vasilisa going to weave a hundred yards of black cloth studded with diamonds? But she knew who to ask. She pulled out little Kukalka, fed her and said the magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done. And Kukalka whispered in her ear and told her to leave a third plate of food on the window, go to sleep, and all would be well. Well, this Vasilisa did. And while she slept, dark nighttime came by, saw the food and ate it, and as a thank you, left her a gift of a hundred yards of black cloth studded with diamonds. Well, you can imagine how furious the old witch was when she came home and saw that the girl had completed the third task. How did you do it? I wish I knew. Well, do you know what? I don't like clever girls, so I'm going to eat you anyway. Yes, I shall have you for my breakfast. And do not think that you can escape tonight, for Koshka will scratch you, Misha Masha will tear you apart, that Anushka will peck out your eyes and the gates will bite you. And with that, the old witch lay down and went to sleep. How was Vasilisa going to escape? But she knew who to ask. She pulled out little Kukalka, fed her, and whispered the magic words. Eat up quickly, little one, and tell me, please, what should be done? And Kukalka told her to gather the three beautiful cloths and all the food she could carry, and all would be well. Vasilisa did not know what to do, but she followed these instructions. As she tried to leave, Koshka the cat hissed and spat at the girl, but she threw the cat a fish, and the cat purred and rolled aside and allowed her to pass, and gave her the gift of a small mirror that he had been guarding for the old witch. When she got to the main room, the huge brown bear tried to tear her apart, but she threw him some meat, and he rolled aside on his back and allowed her to pass, and gave her the gift of a small wooden brush he had been guarding for the old witch. When she got to the porch, Veronushka flew down and tried to peck out her eyes, but she threw the bird some bread, and the bird flew away and left her the gift of a silver spoon she had been guarding for the old witch. But then suddenly Vasilisa got to the gates and realized, I have fed Koshka the cat, I have fed Misha Masha the bear, I have fed Veronushka the crow, but I cannot feed a gate. And her tears fell on the hinges of the gate, which were made from the bones of the human hand. And creak, the gate opened. Vasilisa was free, but she knew she daren't go home without a light. Bravely, she lifted up one of the skulls and held it up high. It burned as bright as fire, but she was not burned. Well, you can imagine how furious the old witch was when she woke up and found her breakfast had escaped and all of her animals had left as well. But before they left, they had destroyed her iron pot and her broomstick so she could not fly after the girl who had been so kind to them. Baba Yaga screamed and began to run after Vasilisa through the deep, dark forest. Vasilisa ran faster and faster, and the old witch was coming closer and closer. So she did what Kukulka told her to do. She took the mirror and she threw it behind her. The mirror became a lake that was a thousand miles long and a thousand miles deep and a thousand miles wide. Baba Yaga screamed when she saw it. But then she bent down and began to drink, drink, drink the lake. And soon the lake was dry. Vasilisa ran faster and faster. And Baba Yaga came closer and closer. And so she did what Kukulka told her to do. She took the brush and she threw it behind her. The brush became a forest of trees that was a thousand miles tall, a thousand miles wide, and a thousand miles deep. Baba Yaga screamed when she saw it. But then she used her claws and her teeth to tear her way through the forest. And soon she was chasing the girl again. Vasilisa ran faster and faster. And Baba Yaga became closer and closer. So she did as Kukulka told her to do. She took the spoon and she threw it behind her. The spoon dug a canyon in the ground. 
that was a thousand miles long and a thousand miles wide and a thousand miles deep. Baba Yaga screamed when she saw it because she knew she had no way to cross the canyon. But Vasilisa did not know that. And so she ran faster and faster and faster and faster until she came to her own little cottage where they were surprisingly happy to see her. Oh, Vasilisa, cried the stepmother. It has been as dark as midnight since you left. Quick, give us the light. And so Vasilisa handed over the skull, which glowed brighter and brighter and hotter and hotter until the stepmother and the stepsisters burst into flames and burned and burned until there was nothing left but a pile of ashes. Vasilisa swept up the ashes and buried the skull in the garden and then went far, far away across the thrice nine realms in search of her father. When she found him, he cried to hear her tale of woe. But she laughed and said, it doesn't matter. I'm with you now and that's what's important. Many years passed and Vasilisa grew to a beautiful young woman. One day it was announced that the prince was going to be crowned king. And so he asked for some clothes to be made for his coronation. Vasilisa took the black cloth studded with diamonds and she sewed him a shirt and sent it to the palace with her compliments. He loved the shirt and asked for another item of clothing. She took the golden cloth and sewed him a cloak for his coronation. He thought it was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen and so he asked for a wedding dress. She took the silver cloth and sewed it into a wedding dress and sent it to the palace with her compliments. Then he called the young seamstress forth, the one who had made the three beautiful pieces of clothing, and asked her to be his bride. And so Vasilisa was crowned queen. She never told him where the beautiful cloths came from, but she always left a plate of food on the window, morning, noon, and night. They were very happy and ruled their kingdom with love and kindness. And she never once needed the help of little Kukalka. But she always kept a little bit of food in her pocket, just in case. How do I know that this story is true? My grandmother told it to me, and now I tell it to you. Thank you very much. Happy Halloween, my little monsters.